Assalamu alaikum. I greet you all with the same greetings of peace that have been used from all the prophets from Adam to Muhammad. The greeting of peace, Assalamu alaikum. For those of you that don't understand what Assalamu alaikum means, it's simply Arabic for peace be upon you. So today's topic of the video is going to be about violence in Islam. Is it acceptable? If it is, when is it acceptable? And who is violence permissible upon? Now, I know a lot of you out there who sit there and propagand, propagandist or propagate against Islam. Talk about how Muslims are violent and how we want to kill all the Muslims and Jews. And we want to, you know, just take over the world. And we're such bad people because all we want to do is just murder and maim and destroy. That's not true. Wallah, it's not true. And I'll tell you, the, the, the biggest part or the biggest misconception about this is that Muslims, we don't turn the other cheek when we're being attacked. And this is true. Neither do Jews. Christians aren't supposed to either. Okay? This has been just changes that have come about and it's not true. It's not correct. It's not right. It's not whatever you want to say. However you want to say it, this is not proper. Okay, Muslims and Jews, we do not turn our cheeks. It says, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Now, let's move on to this a little bit further. Do Muslims want to kill Christians? Do Muslims want to kill Jews? No, we do not, because the Quran specifically says that with the Christians, the Jews, and the Muslims, all who believe, who believe in the Lord shall each have their reward. Islam is just a con continuation of Christianity. Christianity is a continuation of Judaism. Prophets have been sent to people different times based on different circumstances or different situations going on to reconfirm his word. Islam is the final. Islam was the final word that is given to seal all of the prophets, seal his final word. That's why when you look in the Quran, how it confirms a lot that's said in the Bible and how the Bible confirms a lot that's said in the Torah or in the Old Testament. So it's not something new in a sense. So let's just get that, you know, correct. I mean, a lot of people will say, you're wrong. You know, he's just, a, you know, Muhammad, he was a faker and da, da, da. No, it's not true. Muhammad was not a faker, okay? Because there's things in the Quran that cannot be explained that they're finding out now scientifically. You know, there's things in the Quran that have been said about, such as the quark, you know, the smallest molecule ever. It's discussed in the Quran. The Quran discusses, discusses, the Quran discusses how the baby is formed in the womb. There were no microscopes, there were no CT scans, no MRIs, no ultrasounds, no sonograms 1,400 years ago. So how would a man who was illiterate, by the way, Muhammad was illiterate, how could he understand the process of how a baby is formed in the womb from the point of conception to the forming of the fetus? to the actual birth. How could a man do that without no type of sonogram, without no type of scientific information behind it? So now that we said that, okay, let's move on now and let's talk about violence in Islam. Terrorism is not acceptable. Terrorism goes against Islam. These terrorist organizations out there that speak in the name of Allah. They are wrong. Okay. No innocent person sh 
should ever be killed in the name of Islam. If somebody kills an innocent person, they commit murder. The Quran says, if you take the life of a man, it's as though you take the life of all of mankind. The Quran also says, you save the life of a man. It's as though you saved the life of all of mankind. So where does this violence come from? Where does the, propagate, the propagandists get their information to make Islam seem like such a violent religion that all Muslims want to kill Christians and Jews and non-believers? And that, where do they get all this information? Well, of course, they go to the Quran, but they don't read you the full context. Okay, and then also they look at the groups out there that do these types of heinous, violent acts. And they say, see, see, there, there goes the Muslims again. There they go again. They're doing it again. Look, 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 they're doing it. No, Muslims aren't doing it. People who have hijacked the name of Islam are doing it. And Muslims speak out against it. Proper Muslims do speak out against this violence, these acts of terrorism. That's why Muslim countries fight these terrorist organizations. But you don't see that much in the you know, news. You don't see that much information out there. So, when is fighting permissible? Fighting is permissible when you are being oppressed... And your freedoms are taken away and people are fighting against you. It is okay to fight back. And you fight back until they stop. And when they stop, you stop. They fight, you fight. When we do fight... You are not to harm a woman, a child, an elderly person, workers. You're not even supposed to cut down trees or destroy shops. These are rules in Islam about fighting. You fight those who fight you. That's it. That's it. You fight those that fight you. Okay, well, the Islamic informant, then why do all these, you know, Muslims sit there and cheer about this and, you know, that they see that, you know, America has this happen and then they cheer. All right. That has nothing to do with Islam. Yes, those people are Muslims. And you know what? Let's, let's actually use one of the biggest countries as an example. Uh, we're going to say, we're, we're going to go with Palestine. Okay. It's not a religious statement when the Palestinians protest against America. It's a political statement. It's a big difference. A very big difference. Very big difference. America supports the Israeli occupation against Palestine. It supports the Israeli war against the Palestinians and has never taken a stance against the war crimes committed by the Israelis against the Palestinians. Now, I'm not, I'm not making this political here. I'm not making this political here. Because, don't get me wrong, it's not political. I'm not, you know, saying anything. I am half American. My father's from Syria. I'm half American. I live in America. I love my country. Okay, it's a great country uh, to live in, a great country to grow in. Okay, so don't, think that I'm anti-American because I'm not. Okay, what I am saying is about the Palestinians' view. Okay, I am speaking Palestinians' view on this matter. 
Okay, and I'm sure somebody's going to go out there and they're going to clip this and they're going to try to say, oh, no, no, no. But the video's here, the whole video's here, um, you know, and I can, you know, easily back up all my information about what the Palestinians think. Um, a few years ago, white phosphorus gas was being used against civilians in Palestine. Now, Geneva Convention outlawed white phosphorus gas being used against the civilians several years ago, way before this even happened. Okay, I can't remember the exact year. And if you guys want, you can look it up. If you want me to look it up and tell you, I'll look it up. You know, as a matter of fact, let me do that now. I will look that up right now. When did white phosphorus Get banned against civilians. Let's see. I'm looking here now, trying to find out exactly when it was banned. So I'll continue to talk while I'm looking at it. So it looks somewhere around. Okay. So somewhere in the early 2000s, I can't find the exact date now, now but it was somewhere uh, in the early 2000s that it was banned uh, to be used against civilians. Um, it's a it's a permissible weapon to be used or not weapon. Let me let me rephrase that. It's permissible to use to light up the skies so people can see, but to use against civilians, it's not permissible. Even though you know it still says in manuals that hey, look, you can use this, but it was used against women and children, and that's considered a war crime. And nobody spoke out against it. Nobody said, hey, look, Israel, you can't do that, dude. You can't, you can't do that. You've got to back off. You can't do that. There's, you know, in Ramallah, there's, you know, sniper towers that snipers shoot just randomly down alleyways, you know, hitting kids all the time and things like this. So from a Palestinian standpoint, a political idea is formed in their heads that hey look america hates us so we hate them so they do a political protest it has nothing to do with islam sure you have some groups in there that try to use that and leverage islam in there but that's not all of the people that's a small fraction and you can equate that to groups here who do the same thing like the kkk the kkk used to use the bible to justify lynching against black people. Is that Christianity? No, it's not. But some people used the Bible and they said, well, it says right here we can do it. But that's not the case. Jim Jones, same thing. Guyana, he used the word of God as a Christian and committed mass genocide, mass suicide, mass suicide and genocide, actually, because the ones who didn't want to drink the Kool-Aid, they ended up just gunning down. So when you see these groups in countries that have seen America stand against them, in a sense, they politically stand and dislike that, you know, just as uh, just the same as us, you know, when we, you know, hear about like North Korea, for example, you know, here in America, when we think about North Korea, we think about these gangster thugs who are just trying to build these nuclear ICBMs to just launch them here to the United States. This is what we think. This is what the first thing that comes to our head. This is what we think. Then you think about these groups like Al Qaeda. Al-Shabaab, 
you know, uh, ISIS, ISIL, you know, whoever. You, you hear these groups and you think, you, you relate them, you equate them to all of Muslims. But that is not the case. That is not the case. In Islam, we are only allowed to fight those who fight us. We are not allowed to kill or murder innocent people. So if you're fighting in war, then you can only fight those that fight you. If you're defending yourself from somebody who, for example, comes into your house and tries to kill you, you are allowed to defend yourself. You cannot be the aggressor. It says in the Quran, be ye not the aggressor. So, when you think about Islam and you think about violence in Islam, try to separate the two because they are two different things. Now, if Muslims went to war with, let's say, I don't know, uh, I, let's say Muslims went to war against a gang, right? Ah, here, here's, here's a good example. Milosevic, Milosevic, Bosnia. Bosnian Muslims were being killed because they were Muslims. They were being killed. They had every right to fight back. They could fight back until the, until the Serbs stopped fighting. This is a perfect example. A perfect example. Now, I'll tell you, last night I read one of my comments that, you know, uh, Muslims broke the treaty the 10-year treaty between the Meccans. Muslims broke the treaty. That's not true. That is not true. So what happened is, Muslims were killed. And because they were killed, they went into Mecca. They conquered Mecca. But they, nobody fought against the Muslims. Because so many Muslims came, nobody fought. Nobody was harmed. And then, you know, people, they'll sit there, oh, look at the Crusades, look what you guys did then. And then, again, no. England, in its almighty wisdom, back then, during the Crusades, invaded Palestine by orders of the church. They invaded Palestine. And here... Muslims at that point had every right to defend themselves. But they don't they didn't only defend themselves. They also defended the Jews. And I bet a lot of you who you know think about the crusades think that it was just the Muslims and the Christians who fought. No. The uh, Christians were more harsh against the Jews than they were against the Muslims. And Muslims defended the Jews. Prove me wrong. If you don't believe me, prove me wrong. Produce your proof. Prove me wrong. Oh, but you invaded, you know, Turkey and, you know, you, you did this, you did that. And, and, uh, no, that's not what happened. We didn't spread Islam by the sword like a lot of people think. Yes, we did fight countries. Because as soon as we fought countries, the next country over would get in a defensive mode, and then they would attack. And then, of course, we'd fight because we were being fought. But as soon as the fighting over, people converted by their own free will because they saw that, you know, it wasn't accept Islam or die type situation. People were, you know, being let go. People were told, you know, you, you teach 10 men how to read and you can go. You can be free. And when they saw the treatment that they got and how beautiful Islam really is, they converted by their own free will. Now, has there been some hiccups along the way? 
like every other place, like every other country, like every other dynasty, like every other religion. Absolutely. I'm not going to deny that. Absolutely. But that doesn't make for the whole. That doesn't make for the whole. So, again, violence in Islam is not permissible unless it's being performed against you. Killing innocent men, women, children, workers, elderly, not permissible. Oh, but the Islamic informant, why do they do it? Again, there's more political reasons behind it than there are religious. And there's a huge separation between the two. That's why all the other countries are also fighting against ISIS and Al-Qaeda and all the other countries or all the other uh, terrorist organizations. That's why all the Muslim countries are doing the same, fighting against them. Because they are a threat to the religion, they are a threat to the people, and those groups have no distinction between religion and the people. Because they rape women, they kill people for no reason. And it's not acceptable. It is not acceptable. So again, violence in Islam is not acceptable by any standard unless violence is being permitted upon us. Um, now, I know some of you, you know, like to sit there and pull the word taqiyya, you know, against Muslims when they talk like this. Okay. First of all, you guys misuse that word. You guys misword, misuse the word so much and I wish you'd have a great understanding. But hopefully now, what I will tell you will let you understand that. Muslims are not allowed to lie. Okay? It's against the religion to lie. Against God to lie. The only time that it's permissible to lie, Sakya, is when somebody asks, if you're a Muslim... Excuse me. If somebody asks if you're a Muslim, you can deny being a Muslim if your life depends on it. So if somebody holds a knife to my throat right now and says, are you a Muslim? I can say, no, I'm not a Muslim. That's the only time it is permissible to lie, and that is what Takiya is. So, please, stop misusing Arabic words, and let's move forward. Let's educate each other. Let's grow with one another. Okay? It's simple. There's only one God, the same God of Moses, Abraham, Ismail, Jesus, Moses. I think I said Moses already, but you guys get the point. And Muhammad, same God. There's only one God. So guys, my brothers and sisters, listen, it, it's really simple. Let's, let's move forward. Let's not get stuck in stagnant passes. Let's not get stuck listening to other people. We have to research for ourselves. If you hear somebody say something and it sounds off, it probably is. Just research behind them. If somebody says, oh yeah, these Muslims, they want to kill everybody. Well, think about how many Muslims there are. Think about it. How many neighbors do you have that are Muslims? Think about when you go to the doctor or the hospital, chances are you'll see a Muslim. Grocery store, you'll see a Muslim. And no, uh, you don't see anything. Nobody's doing anything. So where is this coming from? Where is it coming from? That's what you have to ask. Why do people say that? So you have less than 10% of a billion, more than a billion people, less than 10% who sit there and use religion for their own political gains. And it happens with every religion. It happens with every religion. So, my brothers and sisters, I hope this has educated you somewhat. I hope that you have understood what I've been saying. And I hope that I haven't misled in any direction. Um, 
inshallah, God willing, everybody can get a clear understanding of what is permissible with violence in Islam, when is it permissible, who is it permissible against, and is terrorism a thing of Islam, a product of Islam. As I've discussed, it's not. So inshallah, this will help clear up a lot of your questions or a lot of your thoughts about Islam and violence within Islam. And if not, you know, then I'll have a live stream that happens daily. You can pop in then a live stream at 9 a.m. Um, between Monday and Friday. And ask me. Say, hey, you said this, but this is what I see. Tell me, why do I see that? And I'll take, I'll take it that way. And we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out together. My goal making these videos is to bridge the gap between Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. We are all worshiping the same God. Whether you call him God, Allah, Elohim, whatever you call him, it's the same God. It's just different languages. So, I leave you all with the same greetings that I met you with. The greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum. And inshallah, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning on my stream at 9 a.m. Until then, thank you so much for checking out my video. Thank you so much for seeing me. Thank you so much for welcoming me back into the YouTube community. Um, you know, I, I did an intro video on my first stream explaining why I was away. But now, inshallah, daily videos, daily live stream. I will see you guys tomorrow. Alhamdulillah, you guys have a great night, a great day. And may Allah reward you with everything that you seek today. I'm going to uh, leave with a dua. Rabbana a'tini fi dunya hasnat wa khira hasnat wa kaina al-dabar And that means, our Lord, grant us that which is good in this life, that which is good in the hereafter, and save us from the torment of the hellfire. Assalamu alaikum. You guys are beautiful. I love you all. Bye.